All right, so what I'm going to do here is uh, tell you a little bit about how to select rough. Uh, I'm not an expert. Actually, I'm a beginner. So I'm working with some very basic rough. This is uh, my uh, relatively, well, pretty, very recently purchased V2 uh, fastening machine from Ultratech. Uh, quite a good machine. Bought it used from 1981. And then I have here a batch of amethyst rough, one of my favorite stones. And as you can see, these are very big stones. Um, it's cheap stuff and something that I can afford. And with my skill level, if I make a mistake, it won't be too bad. Uh, so um, until some better materials arrive that I've ordered, what I'm doing now is I'm just using water to check out the color. Uh, and on a white background uh, with some good light from, from a window, uh, I see that this stone has a very nice color. Uh, I've already kind of glanced at a couple of them for clarity. Uh, that stone has a nice color and it just has water on it, which is a little closer to the refractory index of quartz. Um, air, air is further away, so uh, this this softens the optics of the surface. Uh, I like this one for clarity. I'm not as crazy about the color, um, and we'll take a closer look at clarity. I like the color, uh, but I think I like I think I like this one better. And that's my cat. She's always talking. And then here's another candidate that I thought was reasonably clear to my beginner's eyes and wow i really like the color uh, it's not e evenly distributed but uh light refracts in a gem uh, so i can kind of see where the gem would sit inside uh, of the stone where i'd want to hog it out to uh to capture that really deep darker purple there so i've kind of brought it down now to either one of these two stones uh, although you'll see in a second I've got a bunch more candidates and I don't know it's it's really close they both really get illuminated when um, when you look at them this way uh, but when you hold them up to a little more light you can see that uh, the the purple that results from the I think it's iron in the quartz is not equally distributed so when I hog it out, meaning meaning cut away the portions that don't have much color, um, where the color is will kind of dictate that. And I'm feeling this one right now, but uh, so I'm going to put this stone aside. It's very pretty, but a little lighter colored, and I'm going to put it with these others, some of which don't even look clear enough to be called facet grade. And then, since I'm waiting for my oil of wintergreen to arrive, I've been going and I've been dunking these guys in just some canola oil, um, which is going to be a lot closer to the refractory index of quartz. So we're going to get something of the effect that we're looking for when we use oil of wintergreen, uh, which is, as I say, ultimately what I'll be using for this. But without oil of wintergreen, I can still dunk these in. Because of the color of the canola oil, we don't get a great picture just to me, looking through here, yeah, it gives me a sense of where the color is, but I don't get such a great picture of how many inclusions and flaws there are uh, until I pull it out. And uh, you can see, you know, I'm still amassing the proper equipment, so I have kind of a clumsy uh, system for, for stones this large. I'm kind of chasing it around with a, uh, I'm just going to reach in there and grab it. And I'm going to put you over here for a second. In fact, I'm going to break this up now into the next video because uh, this is going to take me a sec. Can't hold it while I do this. But I've got a few over here that already have oil on them that are also candidates.